It's good to be back. It's good to be back. Welcome. Good morning. Good morning from Universal Orlando Resort. Feels good to walk back in these gates. Here's a little bit of an update. Walking in, the Element Store has been closed. It says, pardon for the in inconvenience. Please visit the Quiet Flight Store and you can see everything's all boxed up. They also have some lighting towers out here that don't have the lights on them just yet, but I'm feeling like this is gonna be for Horror Nights. And we were really thinking that the sign for Horror Nights would be up by now, but it is not. I like the shadow here that like reads Florida again. That's cool looking. It is a very light crowd here today. I feel like there's nobody here. I know that it's just opening, like the park just opened, but this is nice. There's nobody here. As we walk into Plaza of the Stars, you can see they have not, uh, since the hurricane, added the tattered fabric back, but they have added a lot more props and they've installed the entrance to the very first maze right here. This is gonna be American Horror Story. This scare zone is called Altars of Horror and you can see it's just a bunch of signs, I think, for all the different houses. And I think they're gonna have characters from each house roaming around the street here so you can take photos with them. And it's not all of the houses, it's just the uh, intellectual property houses too, which is interesting. So walking up to the entrance to Rip Ride Rocket here, there's a little like stand that has a bunch of Horror Nights merchandise and they have a tribute store. We're hoping that it's open. It was like annual pass holder preview yesterday. Well, there's a couple more booths back here for Horror Nights merchandise. And then these are all bars and stuff for Horror Nights. Here is the entrance to The Shining. These are either drink booths or they're going to be uh, more than likely carnival games. Actually, by looking at the tents, they are going to be carnival games. Yeah, look, short shot. Ooh, games of skill and chance. And then, of course, the thing that you hit with the sledgehammer to try to win uh, America Eagle, I guess. Because nothing says horror like America Eagle. I like how they're, what is a mustache pickle. If you're good at basketball, which Jen is, she could win. Uh, Mr. Pickle has a mustache and glasses. This is basically me in pickle form. Okay, yeah, there's nobody here. All the bars are out, of course, which they removed for the hurricane and have since replaced. There's nobody here in the scare zone, or not in the scare zone, in the streets at all. This is impressive. And they've got the signs up for the food booths here, like salted Bavarian pretzels and fresh mini donuts. I'm excited. They also released all of the special food and drinks that they will have in the Universal Orlando blog. And we'll put a link to that down in the description down below. I like how they're uh, outrageous live shows. They also have out the entrances for Fallen and Dead Water. So this is where you will go. You'll go through the Fallon Extended Queue or back here towards the New York Public Library. Yes, it looks like the Tribute Store is open. So let's go inside. And you can see we are headed into the Purge Scare Zone. So all of the Purge stuff is still out. Lots and lots of Purge signs here. And the bus with the Support the Purge banner on it. I like this. This is nice. There's just a box out here in front of the Tribute Store, which I would imagine they're going to put like a dummy in or something, some sort of display during Horror Nights that is not suitable for day guests. Let's head inside. Yes. Oh, it's scary in here. Oh, look, there's Bruce Campbell. He looks like he has the thickest neck I've ever seen in my life. I don't think Bruce Campbell's neck is actually the same width as his head, right? Am I wrong? Lots and lots and lots of merchandise and pop figures and bags. I still don't really understand why Chucky is on some of the merchandise here, but he is. Because Chucky's not here at this event. Here we go. Here's the main shirt for Halloween Horror Nights. And this is $25. Your soul is requested. It seems like most things are $25. Like this Academy of Villains shirt is $25. And it's blacklight responsive. Here's what it looks like without the blacklight. With the blacklight. They, they definitely have a lot of like, like women's uh, wallets, men's bifold wallets. It's pretty, look, horned beanies. Uh, uh, okay. They have this light up like fedora that sparkles. Is there like a switch in here? Let's see. How do I turn it on? Oh, there it is. This is pretty fun actually. <laughs> what if I wore this around Horror Nights? And this is frightening. Here's, uh, what's his name, Billy from Saw or Jigsaw. And then here's the trap from the very first movie where it was like supposed to rip her head apart. Here are a couple of uh, just kind of nondescript Horror Night shirt. Like this one says, baddest witch in town. And this one says, in your best nightmare, not your worst, your best. This one is $25. 
and this one is $30. For $32, you can get like one of these long tank tops. I think this is a women's tank top. You can see how the, the tail end of it is real long in the back back there. $32. Now Horror Nights has bubble wands. You guys know I dislike bubble wands. Here it is. For $22, you can have a skull bubble wand and I, I just hope that like these are for kids, right? Or are adults gonna be walking around Horror Nights blowing bubbles all night? Also, they have a bunch of uh, Horror Nights hand-painted Christmas ornaments here. I like this snake venom one. That's actually really neat. It looks like Harry Potter. What does it say? Liquid Malice. Ooh. Should be noted that there are two rooms to the Halloween Horror Nights store. Let's go into the second one here. First thing that we see, is a Bill and Ted's shirt, because this is the last year for the Bill and Ted's excellent Halloween adventure at Halloween Horror Nights. So this is their farewell tour, and they've got coffee mugs and shirts, and they had shot glasses, but I'm not seeing any. It looks like they were all replaced with the Horror Nights uh, shot glasses. Oh, how much is this? $25, how much for a coffee mug? $17, and then the shot glass, is ten dollars. Here is the exclusive Halloween Horror Nights vinyl figure for seventeen dollars. Pretty cool. Ooh, this is frightening. Also they have an American Horror Story uh, display and they have a Sam display up here from Trick or Treat. This looks awesome. And then also they have masks. You can't wear a mask to Halloween Horror Nights. You can buy this and then uh, have it sent to the front and you can, they'll pick it up at the end of the event. Here is the annual pass holders merchandise for $25. The only difference is it's got a big old thing on the sleeve that says annual pass holders. Of course, everybody's favorite, the lanyard. This is gonna be hard to show off, isn't it? There it is, it's a double-sided lanyard. And these are at $10.99. Oh, they have special horror shorts. Horror shorts. I don't know why they're selling shorts in here. This is all like Walking Dead stuff, which isn't a part of Horror Nights this year. But why are they selling shorts? Here's a little something from the hurricane. The awning outside of Finnegan's has been rolled back and stored up close to the building for the hurricane so it didn't blow off. Just passing by the drink place here outside of the purge zone and you can see Here's some of the specialty drinks, and here's even more of the specialty drinks. These don't have to be, these are available in alcoholic and non-alcoholic. And then we got just regular old beers and sodas. But you can see they come in a special square glass that's separated, and then you get a twisty straw, so that like for this candy corn one, these two flavors mix together in your mouth. Well, this is interesting. It looks like for the hurricane, they took down all of these perch props that were out front of the doorways, they still haven't put them back. The event starts on Friday. So the last time that we were here, there was a stage out here for Rock the Universe and has since been taken down. I think this is pretty interesting because this is still up. Like we had a hurricane come through and this prop is still here. It looks like we've got a few more cars out here for the purge and these two on the end here look like they're just covered with Christmas lights. So this is an interesting progression. I wonder what they're covered with Christmas lights for. I do like that they made license plates for all the cars which is cool and you can see this one still has what i believe to be the uh the wood chipper on it here's something that i'm real excited for twisted taters of course are a staple of halloween horror nights but funnel cake puffs sound amazing as we're walking down past fast and furious supercharge which had the walls down for the hurricane they are be since been put back up they forgot to cover up this sign from last night's employee preview just telling us what is down this path? And these are the three houses in the show that are this away. Oh, they forgot to cover up the other side too. And we can see these are the rest of the houses and which way to go to get to them. As we're walking into the invasion scare zone, you can see they have removed some stuff for the hurricane and they haven't put it back quite yet. But the UFO did make it through the hurricane as well as the fair lane. They also took down the scrim covering what used to be earthquake and will now be fast and furious supercharged. Is this stack right here new? I don't remember that being there, but you can see, looks like they're doing a lot of work. They've already started doing some stucco work here. This looks good. They started doing lath everywhere else. This facade should be done fairly quickly. Looking back behind the UFO, we can see 
There's some huge jugs that they fill with water, I believe to hold it down during the hurricane, if not just to hold it down in general. And of course, ever since I noticed that there's a little wind gauge hanging out of the side of this building and we had a hurricane, I want to know what readings it got during the hurricane here at Universal Orlando. As we're walking up to the Bill and Ted sign to show you guys, Bill and Ted's excellent Halloween adventure and it just tells you the times for it and everything. Uh, you can see here's some of the hurricane damage. All the trees here have been blown over. Wow, this isn't really damage, I guess, but the trees are down. Just walking towards Men in Black here, and you can see here's the entrance to the Bloomhouse maze. As we stand out in front of the Men in Black queue, we can see through the bushes, and this is really impressive because this is literally just a tent, like a circus tent almost, that had no damage from the hurricane. This is going to be the entrance to Hive, and this will be the entrance to Scarecrow the Reaping. And there's a scary squirrel behind it. Horror Night Squirrel is just looking for water. Everybody's favorite Horror Nights beer, Dufftoberfest, is now available at Duff Gardens here in Springfield. So this, this may be me being ridiculous and noticing things that people don't normally notice, but the DeLorean has moved. I believe maybe they took it backstage for the hurricane. The only reason that I can tell is the wheels are now cocked, whereas normally they were straight, and it's not quite sitting in the exact line that you would get before, before you would look at this, uh, this sign here and the DeLorean would be directly behind it. Now it's just kind of off to the side a little bit. From everything that I've heard, this is a screen-used DeLorean, and this is a screen-used train from Back to the Future 3, and this is a, I believe it's a B car from uh, one of the Back to the Futures. I'm not sure which one. Like, I like the idea of having psychic readings at Horror Nights, but I think that this is the least popular booth here, but it's been here every year. They also have face painting, and you can get, you can't wear a mask to Horror Nights, but you can get a Walking Dead Man, or Halloween Rage, or the Vampire Queen. This looks like, like a, something that I've seen before, like a garbage pail kit or something. And then on the way into Kid Zone, there's another little Horror Nights merchandise cart here. I can't see anything yet because it's not open, but there it is. One of the things that was announced on the Horror Nights blog that we have linked in the description down below for the food for Halloween Horror Nights is available here in Kid Zone Pizza Company, and it will be pizza fries, which are just like french fries covered with mozzarella and pizza sauce and pepperoni and sausage. You'll find me here very often eating pizza fries. As we're walking towards the entrance to Ash versus Evil Dead, we're noticing that Kid Zone here does not open until 10 a.m. And another interesting fact is that also includes E.T. So E.T. is closed until 10 a.m. Uh, it's about 15 minutes from now, so we can come back in 15 minutes. So here's just a little tiny tip for Horror Nights. Here is a bar right here, and this bar always has a super long line. If you're just looking to get a beer, Right there, that red roof on your way into Kid Zone also sells beer, and there usually isn't a line there, but there's always a line at this bar. As we head into uh, the Trick or Treat Scare Zone, it looks like everything is still intact. They haven't added any new stuff. All of the pumpkins are still hanging out, which is real impressive because a hurricane came through here and there are still pumpkins hanging from the tree. Dun, 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 dun. We did notice that they took out the scarecrows, like the sheet covered scarecrows from around the buildings. I'm sure those will be back soon though. Horror Night starts tomorrow. It's supposed to be Academy of Villains shows tomorrow. The stage is not set up at all for Academy of Villains. It just was dropped down for the hurricane and they haven't put back up the props or anything. After looking at photos from last night's employee preview, this is a temporary stage that Academy of Villains was performing on. So I'm assuming Maybe for opening weekend, they will be using this temporary stage again. Well, this is interesting. There were some gates that led backstage right there that seemed to have been ripped off or no longer there. Wow, that's some destruction. Look at where the hinges were. As we're walking through Hollywood, a area that will become the Scare Zone Festival of the Deadliest. I just tripped. There are no props out still. Since the last time we were here, we did get the announcement that Terminator 2 3D will be closing October 8th. No news as to what will be replacing it, but they just say it will be a high energy universal property. I like how Scooby-Doo is just kind of sitting over here, hanging out by himself. Last but not least, 
Here is the entrance to Saw, which uses the second theater for the Shrek building and the Shrek extended queue back there. And as we're leaving uh, studios to head over to Islands of Adventure, there's a Halloween Horror Nights sign here as we leave telling us to stave on event tickets with our daytime admission. We had seen reports that after the hurricane, Hulk was not running. It looks like it's running now. I don't know what happened here. There used to be, I think it was a freestyle machine cart. It's no longer here, but I like it better because you got a view of Hulk and of Hogwarts Castle. Not Hogsmeade Castle, Hogwarts Castle. So I like this view a lot better without the cart here. You can see that the nets around Hulk did suffer quite a bit of damage from the hurricane. We just came back to Dr. Doom's Fearfall because there's a new single rider stairway over here. You used to have to go through the uh, gift shop, but now there's a new stairway just so you don't have to go through the gift shop. And I thought, this looks kind of awesome. Here's something that I think is pretty interesting. This is a view of Jurassic Park River Adventure and we can tell the entire ride is drained. I'm assuming that is to check for damage from the hurricane. Funny thing is, this was running yesterday afternoon. Like they stopped it and they weren't running it in the morning, but then it started running in the afternoon and now it's not running and it's completely drained. Here's a little bit better view where you can see that the entire track is drained of water for Jurassic Park River Adventure. As we walk through Jurassic Park in towards Hogsmeade, you can see those walls are still up, still working on the projection stuff for the castle show coming in November, the holiday castle show. Another thing to note is after the hurricane, this bridge was closed. It has since reopened again, so you can get an up close shot of Hogwarts Castle. The first thing that we're seeing as we're coming into the area that used to be the exit of Dragon Challenge is this construction wall here. Oh, such a sad day. They're doing something new. We don't know what yet. We know that it's gonna be Harry Potter. We don't know what exactly. Now I know that this is normally crowded because of the entrance to Dragon Challenge, but it's not very crowded inside of Hogsmeade at all. The sign taken down where it used to say Dragon Challenge, the golden egg taken down, nothing's left. The track is still there, of course. I don't know when they're gonna start working on that, but this is what we're seeing right now. The walls look good. I do like that they put up themed walls here in the Wizarding World. The other thing that has been removed are the test seats. The test seats for Dragon Challenge are no longer here. We came back in towards the exit of um, the Hogwarts Express to see if we could see any of the track being taken down. So we did hear that the blue one has started being disassembled, but I just can't see anything just yet. We thought to ourselves, let's go back by the eighth voyage of Sinbad and see if we can see a better look at the coaster back there. And we came up to a wall. There you have it. Sinbad is behind walls. I don't know why, but it's behind walls. Also behind walls is the Talking Fountain, which is normally right here. So upon further investigation, you guys can see people here from Horticulture re-supporting this tree here. I think it may have fallen during the hurricane, and that is why the entrance to the Eighth Voyage of Sinbad is closed. I do have to admit, I'm having a hard time walking around today with all these people in my way. It's getting hard. Fun fact, after talking about all the hurricane damage and stuff that we've seen, these trees here in Seuss Landing that are all curvy like this are actually palm trees that were bent or knocked over during a hurricane and then transplanted to where they are now. That's how they got these fun shaped bendy trees. On the way out of Islands of Adventure, I'm seeing like some thing one and thing two merchandise. These are fun. Like I kind of like this design a lot and this one too. They're cool. I'm gonna go ahead and say that this is blowing my mind right now. There's literally an airplane here that stayed in place during the hurricane. Like these wings are made to make it take off. I guess maybe they, they put up the, uh, the flaps to like when the wind comes across, like that just gives it a down push. I don't know, maybe that's why the flaps are up. But also there's a roof made of leaves that is still there. Well, there you have it. Lots of progress since the last time that we were here. I'm glad that there's not any damage really that I can see. There's very minor damage. And uh, yeah, can't wait for Horror Nights. There's a giant shrimp right there. <laughs> but we are headed home, so stay tuned for more Horror Nights vlogs and some other fun stuff around the Universal Orlando Resort this weekend is coming. I'll see you guys tomorrow. And now it's time to pay the price.